All right, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the percent air and sand experiment and some calculations with it. Um, we've got four pictures here. You remember doing this experiment. You began with a, be a beaker of some dry sand, and you poured that sand into a graduated cylinder. Um, I've got that pictured on the, in the first picture, and then I've zoomed in in the second picture. Can you do your best to record for yourself, looking at that picture, what the volume of dry sand is? It's a little hard to see, but can you, can you do your best and tell me what you think the volume of dry sand is? So on this graduated cylinder, the major scale is 10 from 30 to 40 to 50. We're going up by 10s. The minor scale, there's 10 spaces between 30 and 40, so the minor scale is 1. That means each tick mark is 1 milliliter. So you can tell the dry sand level is between 30 and 31. It's a little bit closer to 31, so I would probably say about 31, 30 rather, 0.8 or 30.7 would be a good estimate of the volume of dry sand. So if you said 30.9, if you said 30.7, those are all fine. Even 30.6 is probably okay with the quality of that image. Next, we'll measure the volume of water. So we take the dry sand and we pour it out of that cylinder and we refill the cylinder with some water. So now I've got a meniscus showing here. Pause the video, see if you can record for yourself the volume of water in that graduated cylinder. So again, the minor scale is one milliliter. So there's, it's got more than 20 milliliters, but less than 21. The curved surface of liquid in the cylinder is called the meniscus. And you're supposed to look at the very, very bottom most point in the center of that meniscus. So essentially you're looking at this point, let me get a different pen here. You're looking at this point here on the meniscus. So it's between 20 and 21, maybe slightly closer to 21. It's really kind of in the middle. I would say about 20.6 or 20.5 would be a good estimate. So again, you can take either of those. I'll use 20.6 milliliters. Lastly, we took the dry sand and we poured the sand into the cylinder that has the water. So the sand sank to the bottom and then the water level got pushed up. So can you look at third, the last picture here and record the level of the water, the highest level of the water, after the sand had been poured in? So it looks like it's a little tiny bit higher than um, well, it's right around 41 with the quality of the image, the cloudiness of the water. It's a little hard to tell. If you were looking at the very bottom most point of the meniscus, actually it's probably very close to 41. Um, I would guess uh, that it's probably just actually slightly less than the 41, the, the bottom most point of the meniscus. Um, remember the surface of the water has a bit of a, a, bit of a thickness to it. I'm going to guess about 40.9. If you thought 41.0, you thought of exactly 41, or if you thought even 41.1 with the quality of this image, that's fine. I'm going to write 39, I'm going to write um, 40.9 as my volume combined. All right, so there's our data, those three measurements. Now, if you're ready for your test, you should already know where this is going. What, what are some things that we're going to want to calculate? Well, ultimately we want to calculate the percentage of air in the sand. That means we need the volume of air. Um, so also, you're often also asked to find the volume of sand grains. So let's just get those things down. So the results, can we calculate the volume of the sand grains? The little particles that make up the dry sand. Can we calculate the volume of air that was in the dry sand? And lastly, can we calculate the percent of air in the dry sand? So the volume of the sand grains, look at the numbers we have. 
we know that the original, and think this through, don't try to just memorize. So the dry sand particles, sorry, the water level started at 20.6. After adding the dry, the dry sand, the level went up to 40.9. Why did the water level rise? Well, it rose because the sand particles, the solid material in the sand, was displacing the water. So if I subtract those two numbers, that should tell me the volume of the sand particles. Right? Notice how I reasoned that. I'm not just memorizing it. The water level goes up because of the sand particles displacing water. So the difference in the water levels is the volume of the sand grains, the solid material in the sand. So if I take 40.9 and subtract 20.6, remember when subtracting you look at the decimal places, so we're going to keep one decimal place in this answer. We get 20.3 milliliters of sand particles. But the sand itself originally had a volume of 30.8. Right? The original dry sand was 30.8. We now know that the sand particles that was in the sand, the sand grains, had a volume of 20.3. Well, then why was the dry sand volume bigger than that? It's because there was air. So therefore, if I want the volume of the air, I can take the dry sand volume, 30.8 milliliters, and I can subtract the sand grains, 20.3 milliliters, now this is going to tell me how much air was in the dry sand. So if we do again, we look at the decimal places, and we're going to keep one decimal place in our answer because there's one decimal place in each of those measurements. So we end up getting 10.5 milliliters of air. Now there's another way to have reasoned the, that air. You could have found the volume of air in a slightly different way. If you took the 30.8 milliliters of sand, dry sand, and you added it to the water, if there was no air, let me go down to the bottom here, so if there was no air, this is another way to find the, the volume of air and the volume of sand grains, you can use whichever method you prefer. So if there was no air, the total volume would be, so looking up at our numbers, 30.8 mils of dry sand added to 20.6 mils of water, 30.8 plus 20.6 would have been 51.4 milliliters. Right? It would have been 51.4 milliliters. But there was air, right? So the volume of air, we know there was air. The, the total volume was not 51.4, it was 40.9. So why was the actual total volume less than what it would have been? It's less because there was air. So if I take that 40.9 milliliters of sand with water, subtract it from this, so 51.4, what it should have been, minus the 40.9, what it actually was, I'm going to find that the answer is 10.5 milliliters of air. All right, which is the same answer we got above. Once you know the volume of the air, 10.5 milliliters, you could subtract that from the volume of dry sand, 30.8, and you would get the 20.3 mils of sand grains. So two different ways to find the volume of air and the volume of sand grains. Choose whichever method makes more sense to you. Percentage of air, we're going to take the volume of the air, we're going to divide by the volume of the dry sand, the original dry sand, and times by 100. So we take 10.5 milliliters, the original dry sand has 30.8 milliliters, and we times by 100. Remember that when you're dividing, you look at the number of significant digits to round off your answer. So 10.5 divided by 30.8, each of those numbers has three significant digits. So I'm going to keep three significant digits in my answer. I'm going to get 34.1% air. All right. So there's my volume of sand grains, my volume of air, and the percentage of air in the dry sand. Right, 34.1%.
All right, so I hope that helps. Be prepared. This is the only lab that we did that had major calculations in it other than the basic statistics. So you can anticipate that there will be a question involving this on your test. Be prepared that you can do the calculations if you were given the data like this.